Alright, so in this video we're going to start looking at flexural buckling. We're going to start by defining idealized or Euler buckling, which is when we're modeling uh, buckling when it is in perfect conditions. We're going to use that to find our load and stress that is actually required to cause such a buckle. And then we're going to compare the idealized buckle with something that happens in real life, so real buckling. Right, starting with uh, what idealized buckling is. So remember that Euler or idealized buckling is actually modeling a perfect condition where flexural buckling actually occurs. And this is when a whole member or an overall member begins to buckle. And this causes a failure mode where it is unstable and causes um, additional bending without any added load. So if we were to add a load here, we can see a column would deflect like this. Alright, so an idealized buckling or flexural buckling would look something like this, but will then propagate on without any added load. Now when we look at flexural buckling or idealized buckling, we the strength of our capacity is actually not related to uh, our yield stress. So the capacity in buckling is actually highly related to stiffness and length. I know previously when we looked at strength, we mostly looked at section capacity where we've only considered the cross section as well as our yield stress. But in this case, when we're looking at buckling on its own, we're only going to be considering things like